it's magical. You can invest this money and not get taxed. And I'm like, welcome to Singapore. Mari kita. <laughs> I want to be able to walk into a Zara and buy stuff without looking at the price tag. That's what makes me happy. I don't need to go to like Dior. I don't need to go to Hermes. I don't even need a singular Hermes bag for the rest of my life. Am I just co copying Ramit Sethi's dream life? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, I'm just like, oh. No, he likes more expensive stuff. I'm, I only, I'm only seeing Zara. If you're a US citizen, it doesn't matter what you do, where you breathe, the US government will always tax you. You can be working in Singapore, US government tax you. You can be working for Malaysia. Yeah, they just tax you everywhere you go. So really, insane. you have no money left when you're 73. So if you start with $1 million, you are supposed to withdraw $40,000 every single year. Hi friends, welcome back to our series where Erin and I have unscripted casual conversations while we're eating snacks about <laughs> topics that we're passionate about, like personal finance, you already know, investing, trading and entrepreneurship. Join us for a blend of light-hearted conversations Aye. and deep dives into topics that fascinate us. It will range from the philosophical to the technical and sometimes even comical. Oh, Rude. Think of this series as us inviting you to our home to hang out and have a casual chat with us. Yep, so get drink. comfortable, get a snack, and let's get started. It's the questions for today's, what do we call this? Casual home session podcast, thing, talk, show, Unscripted, YouTube video, TikTok video, Instagram video. This is why you need to be muted. This is why I need ChatGPT. <laughs> so today, we're going to be talking with each other about, and with you guys, but we can't really hear what you guys say, so we just imagine this is a conversation, and then you type your comments. Imagine this is a live. And then, as you are watching this video, feel free to comment. You can comment like 10 times in this video. So, today we're going to be talking about retirement and finding out our retirement number using the 4% rule. All right, so I'm going to read to you the like official 4% rule, which you can find on Investopedia and what it means. The 4% rule is basically what we used to guesstimate how much number we need for retirement. It's not something that we're going to take to the grave. It's not something that we're saying like, is 100% accurate because it's not. But at least we kind of know what we're working towards and we're not just like running towards an undefined goal, which is a bad goal because you should make smart goals. Right, so the 4% rule for retirement budgeting suggests that a retiree withdraw 4% of the balance in their retirement account in the first year after retiring and then withdraw the same dollar amount adjusted for inflation every year thereafter. And so the 4% rule is intended to supply a steady stream of income while maintaining an adequate amount balance for future years. So this number assumes that we're going to be investing our money, right? Or no? I actually can't remember. For the 4% rule, it doesn't include the assumption that we are going to be investing our money for a certain rate of return. No, okay, so the 4% rule was based on like 50 years of historical data. And what this means is that you can actually take 4% out of your account so, okay, let's say you have like a million dollars, you're gonna withdraw 4%, so that's $40,000. Mm -hmm. $40,000 a, a year. The 4% rule says that from that year onwards, you can withdraw $40,000 every single year, plus inflation. So if inflation is 1%, then you will withdraw $40,400, I think? Four zero four zero. yeah. So you withdraw $40,400 on the second year, if inflation is at 1%. And if you do this, it should be able to last you for retirement. But it depends on how long you're going to live for and when you retire. The 4% rule was intended to make your retirement last for 33 years. Oh, okay, right. So there is a time limit. If you retire at 40 and do the 4% rule, you'll be broke when you are... How old are you? How old will we be if we retire at 40? 60 plus? 70, we, you'll be broke at 73. So if you retire young, when you retire at 40 and decide to do the 4% rule, you have no money left when you're 73. Um, yes. So uh, that's the problem with the 4% rule. And I think not a lot of people know because they say, oh, it's good enough for retirement. And most people assume retirement and then last forever. But even if you retire at 60, it lasts for 33 years, which means when you are 93 and you definitely cannot work when you're 93, you have no money left. They'd be thrown onto the roadside. If we're able to invest that money for a minimum of 4% return a year, that would does that mean that money lasts infinitely or does that mean that it just, pro I guess it just prolongs it for longer, right? 
Yes, it just so the four percent rule prolongs it because if you're withdrawing four percent for thirty three times, you're technically withdrawing like hundred and thirty percent. So you have like additional thirty percent of withdrawal capacity. If you didn't invest in the stock market and you withdraw four percent, you would finish in what twenty five years. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. So the thirty three per the thirty three years includes investing. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's what I was asking. The four percent rule is you put your money into the stock market and you only withdraw like 4%. And it's not 4% of your remaining, it's 4% from the year that you start. So if you start with $1 million, you are supposed to withdraw $40,000 every single year, including inflation. So if inflation goes by 1%, the next year you, you withdraw 40,000 in 40,400. So, okay, so, so my question is that the 4% rule assumes that you'll be investing your money at a rate of 8%. Oh, no, I think in this case, the, the, the research was done just based on like the broad market index. So S and P five hundred. Yes, and the study was done very long ago, so it may not be applicable now. Like really long ago, like nineteen something. Everything I thought I knew about the number is going out the window right now. <laughs> yeah, so a lot of people got misconceptions on how the four percent rule actually works. They assume that you just withdraw four percent in while being invested in something. They're not sure what that is, and it's last them forever, which is not the case. You will end up with zero dollars at the end of the day. Or you're thinking of withdrawing 4% from whatever's left, of which you'll never go down to zero. But as time goes on, um, you will run out of money. Or like the amount that you withdraw gets lesser and lesser. Oh. Then it makes starts, starts to make sense. Oh man, my number of 2.5 million, assuming we need 100k a year, 2.5 million because of the 4% rule, yeah. is now invalid. It's invalid if that's the only strategy, which is to put money in and take out 4% every single year adjusted for inflation. Yes, we will run out of money in 33 years. Saying that, the 4% rule is, is just created because it's easy to remember and easy to understand and easy to apply. And it is applicable for most people. Yet if you're retiring, taking out 4%, you would probably outlive the amount of money that you need. But again, this doesn't account for what if you've got an emergency medical bill and all that as well. So just the 4% rule is just something for you to take note of. If you want to be safer, you can do a 3% rule. But the interesting thing is that in recent years, looking at the way stock market has been growing, even if you, if you do the 5% rule and you take um, the numbers that you have seen from like 2000 all the way to now, actually the 5% rule also works because the stock market growth has increased a lot more and we also have higher inflation. And again, that's assuming that you're probably going to live for like 33 more years. Okay, so this 4% rule it will not be applicable to people who are young like us who, for example, let's say we want to retire by 35 or, or even 40, right? Mm. If retirement literally means staying at home, not doing anything or going out with your friends or going for yoga every day or lying on a beach in Bali and literally not bringing in any more income for the next 33 years of your life, the 4% rule wouldn't work because then you'll run out of, of money at 70. Yes, if you retire at like 40, yeah. Yeah, you'll run out of money. But if you're a, the definition of retirement is something a little bit different where you are still going to be, be bringing in income and that money you're looking at is more of like fun money or like just money that allows for financial freedom, mm -hmm. then it is not as bad. Because then we can take a smaller percentage instead of like 4%, we can take like 3% or 2%, right? So a very safe number is like the 3% rule is a lot safer. It could probably last you a lot longer. Because you are withdrawing 25% less mm -hmm. every single year. So it will last you a lot longer. It will probably last you like 40 something years just based on my very bad mathematical mm. calculation. And like the 4% rule, if they're doing it for retirement, the assumption is that they will be putting it into very safe investments, right? Because it's for older people. So the historical data was on stocks and bonds. So it's diversified. To what degree? It didn't it doesn't say here. I can look, I can read up more okay. about the paper as well, but yeah, not so sure. in my head I'm just wondering if if let's say like because we're all looking at, or at least for us, we're looking to retire much younger. But because we're younger, if we put the money into something that is like some of the money into something that's safe, but other things into something that's less safe, like medium risk, not high risk, not like, okay, I don't want to say specific things, but like things that are high risk, like don't GME it, right? Like yep, you yep. put it into something that's a bit higher risk, but could provide a bigger reward. It's okay, right? Because we're younger. So if anything were to happen to that small amount of money, I guess we just go back to work. We have the age to go back to work. Right. If, let's say, like things would happen, but if you are building a retirement account for an older person who's going to retire at 60, then you wouldn't do that. The problem with that is, okay, the reason why you probably still want a balanced portfolio is because if you have like high risk, 
means okay, when, when people talk about high risk usually that just means higher volatility and there's a higher chance of you having huge drawdowns and doing the four percent rule you don't want to do high drawdowns you don't want mm. to have that high drawdown so let's give a scenario That's true, right? you're taking out your money every year exactly so let's say you're taking out the four percent rule you're taking out forty thousand dollars every single year um, and right now it's 2020, it's COVID, you, you just started a million dollars and you're going to withdraw $40,000, right? So that's 4%. The problem is the day you want to withdraw, the day you need the money, your bank account is, your bank account is zero and you're starving, the stock market has fallen 50%, right? Almost 50% during COVID. And now your stock portfolio is down to like 500,000. But the rule is the 4% rule. You're supposed to withdraw from the million dollars, which means buy right according to the rule. If you want to follow it, you're supposed to withdraw $40,000, which means you withdrew 8% of your entire account. And when the stock goes up, you didn't like double your money because you've already withdrawn 8%. So you only have like 90% and you double it, that's 180%, which means you're down 20% from where you should be. And then you still have to withdraw even more money from, from, from that because like, yeah. So the, the way you calculate it and all is very, very, very different. Let's just talk about retirement first, right? Mm, okay. So then we can figure out what the best number for us is. Because back then I assumed, okay, 2.5 mil, 2.5 mil. Well, good. Good for life. You can run around the streets uh, butt naked doing nothing. I, I think it will be good for life though if you do have $2.5 $2. million. <laughs> okay, so that's why I was going to say like, if we define what we mean by retirement, mm. then maybe we can see the $2.5 million is still a number that, that we can work towards. For us, retirement looks like being able to do whatever you want, whatever, whatever you want. But in, 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 practical, in practical sense, it, it means that like for me, because Ramit Sethi always talks about, you know, like don't tell me you just want to do whatever you want, whatever you want. Think of something that's more tangible, right? So for me, I want to be able to walk into a Zara and buy stuff without looking at the price tag. That's what makes me happy. I don't need to go to like Dior. I don't need to go to Hermes. I don't even need a singular Hermes bag for the rest of my life. But what I, what I want to be able to do is to go to like a Zara or equivalent and shop without having to worry about the price. And I want to be able to take business class for flights above for six hours and above. Am I just co copying Ramit Sethi's dream life? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, 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 uh, no, he likes more expensive stuff. I'm, I only, I'm only seeing Zara. So those are the two things that I can think about. And more importantly, I want to have time and location freedom, which means that I want to be able to say no to work that I'm not interested in. So like, for, for example, for us, right, we enjoy the weavings. We'll probably do it for the rest of our lives if you guys will have us, if we can. But I want to be able to say no to like collaborations. I'm not... I don't fully have my heart in, you know what I mean? Mm. Or like, if there are some clients that are extremely, extremely difficult, I just want to be like, you know what, I don't want to work with you guys anymore, it's fine. But for right now, we, right now we can't, right? Because we still need to eat food and live. Uh -huh. So I think those are like the four things I can think about that are like my goals of retirement. But as long as I have those things, I, I, I'm happy. And I still want to be able to, to work the build passion projects, work on passion projects. Yeah. I want to retire early. Not like really early, but the main reason for that is- Everyone wants to become a game streamer. There is <laughs> that. I really enjoy playing games. I love computer games. If I can make money while doing it, that's awesome. And if I can do it as a hobby and find fulfillment in that, that's awesome. But number one for me, I want to retire early. Not so much I can play games. I feel like I can play games when I retire. Even when I'm 60, I'll probably still enjoy playing games. Yeah, but I mean, your hand-eye coordination and your reaction time will be so slow that- um... It's okay, I'll play Minecraft. <laughs> When the, when the zombie comes down, you cannot run away. Like, the, what's that sound? They make like that weird freaking it's sound. Gonna be, it's, gonna I, be, it's gonna be AI already. I'll tell the computer, <laughs> run. And it's gonna make me run. Well, Aaron, I'll figure it out. And Strike. We used to play Kill Minecraft Sarah. When, when we were young. And then Aaron couldn't deal with it, playing it with me because I'm a scaredy cat. And whenever I'm in the house that we built, if there's like, what's that thing that appears in the dark? Zo any monsters, zombies, like, spiders, Yeah, so everything. monsters will randomly appear, but you can hear it on your headphones before you see them on the screen. And I will keep screaming and taking my headphones and throwing it away. Because <laughs> <laughs> like, we're just in the house, it's dark, and you're just building, it's night time. And Sarah's going towards the door, and then you hear the <laughs> sound from the zombie, and she just like freaks out, or it's a skeleton. <laughs> she just freaks out, or the <laughs> sound from the spider. And we're headphones, right? So yeah. Aaron doesn't get a shock from the monsters, he gets a shock because his sister takes off headphones and starts screaming. Yeah, she just like screams and gets a shock, and I'm like, whoa, 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 what's going on? I, I, I'm scared because I think something's happening in real in life. Real life. <laughs> But she just saw her, like a zombie or a skeleton or a spider from like so inside a eight bit. Pixel yeah, we haven't game. we haven't played a game together since. Yeah, I, I don't want to play. I don't play with her anymore. So I'm not playing. <laughs> <laughs> so and, and the idea behind that is because 
There are a lot of games that I want to play now. There's a game called Valheim, I really want to go back to play it as well. But I'm not going to play it, I don't have to force myself to play it because most of these games, they're released now and they're still going to be around, especially single player games. They're going to be around in the future and I can always go back to play them when I'm retired with my friends. But the reason why I want to retire early, because I plan to have kids. I don't know whether I can have kids, but if I can, I will want kids and I want to be able to spend time with them in the future. And so like, I'll spend time with my family and my kids while they're young, while I'm young. So I need to retire early for that. Otherwise, I won't be able to do that. Yeah, and so that's why I want to retire early. But after Obviously they grow a very up, different answer from someone that doesn't want kids and wants kids. <laughs> I want to travel business class. <laughs> but once my kids grow up, I'll probably end up just playing games. <laughs> At least that's, that's, what, that's what I want to do. Well, but living standards wise, to be honest, I'm not very picky. Mm. Like, she wants to go Zara, I'm like, let's go to the Catholic to but buy this. But you want to go Zara to buy stuff for your kids. Mm. Oh, maybe. Mm. Well, that, we'll leave that for, for next time, but at least for myself and my living standards, like, I went to Sarah, she wants to go to Zara to buy a shirt, I'm like, can we go to Decathlon on tomorrow? I want to buy a new t-shirt <laughs> so that I can wear it for filming because I don't find, I don't find that much joy in uh, going Zara to buy things, but I do spend money on tech stuff, so I will still always have the latest iPhone, iPad and Mac, that is still around. Or maybe, oh, it'll be, yeah. or maybe it'll be a Samsung phone by then, you know, we're going to get a Samsung phone, a Samsung tablet, a Samsung laptop. He done. Samsung fridge, oven, TV. I'm not gonna sponsor you. Give up. <laughs> hey, it's just it's worth it's worth the try. Tech in our house, including the iPad that's right in front of us. It's all Apple. And so, like that's that's what I want for retirement. That's my short term and long term goal. That's what I'm striving for. I mm. um, don't know if I can achieve it because uh, it's tough, but we're gonna try. But how much do you think you'll need? Based on my lifestyle, the reason why I think like 2.5 million actually still makes sense for me because even if I have $100,000 starting today or when I want to retire, oh, yeah. I won't spend all of it. Which means mm. I have extra, which I can then reinvest. When I have 100000 then I have leeway, right? If that year I don't use so much, maybe I only spend mm. like $30,000, mm. I have like 70000 to reinvest. But the next year, maybe I spend 70000 I have $30,000, I can reinvest. The keyword is freedom, right? The $100,000 gives you the freedom to pick jobs that you want to Pick jobs that you enjoy doing. Right. Gives you the freedom to to work on passion projects that you really are passionate about. You make like a shit ton of money from that. That's great, you invest the whole 100k. Even if you don't make any money, you have the freedom to say no because you have the 100k. Like your safety net basically, because you love having safety net. So that is like a safety net for life. Yes. Yeah, more or less. And... Now that you're reconsidering what you want and looking at your expenditure, okay, how much do you no, need I think first? now that you frame it that way, I agree because like 100k a year for me, I think it's enough for me to walk in Zara and buy anything I want. Mm. Cab around. Cab around, take business class for flight six hours and above. Mm -hmm. Like, I think it's enough. I mean, it obviously depends on how much I end up traveling. Mm. But I think it's more than enough for me to live a very comfortable life. And because I'm going to be working on things, why are you looking at my chip? Huh? Why are your eye follow my chip? Do you think something is shifting in front of my eyes? <laughs> of course I'm going to look at it. It's basically nearer to me as well. And it's not like I want to eat your chip because there's so many chips here. My chip. 100k is enough for me to live comfortably. And now I can also view it as like a safety net because I know I'll still work. And we'll still be doing stuff. Mm -hmm. And we'll still be making money. So if that can support my lifestyle, then I have the 100k to reinvest. And if there's a year or like six months and I'm like, you know what? I'm burnt out, don't feel like doing this anymore. Mm -hmm. I can take a six months break and not worry about it and you can. Or like if your yeah. kid ends up being in an accident or like something happens to him that he that he needs money, you're like, okay, I have this 100k of extra. Yeah. Which so it's basically just like a glorified safety net. Yeah. And because I think our retirement will look very much different from this, right? We're lucky, <laughs> we're, we're lucky guys. This, I guess it's that's different. That's true, that's true. Um, but I think what people, and maybe what I think you also misunderstood at the start was I how retired. to fall. I already retired. I don't know why I'm having this conversation. I already retired. You didn't understand how the 4% rule is going to work. <laughs> you did your 4% rule, you will be broke when you <laughs> hit like what? Like 60, 70? Only if I stop working. Ah. <clears throat> Oh, chocolate, chocolate chili. There are many other ways for you to apply the 4% rule. Like the 4% rule was done in the mid-90s, so we don't even know whether it's really applicable now. I haven't looked at anyone else who has done the research from like mid-90s to like 2020s, and I'm pretty sure it will be very, very different. 
But actually, if you were to retire today, we do have the opportunity to average off what we have right now, which is high interest rates, right? So mm. the 4% rule, why do you need a 4% rule when you have the 5.14% rule, which is basically US Treasury bills right now, right? So assuming that we don't assume that it's going to be chaotic and the world's going to end, right? So we assume that systematically it's going to remain the same as it was for the past 100 years. You can buy US bond 30 years right now for 5%. Let's say we have $2.5 million and we get 100K every year. Of course, it won't be adjusted for inflation, right? It's 100K stagnant mm -hmm. but that also means that if we don't spend 100k a year like what we were saying just now we can reinvest that so let's say we only spend fifty thousand dollars this year fifty thousand dollars we can reinvest and we can reinvest that into securities and then build up a portfolio that grows with inflation and if you really want to combat inflation you'll probably buy things related to real estate real estate always goes up with inflation so if you buy REITs I do believe that they will outperform in the long run once you consider that they also pay you dividends mm. yeah and that's one possibility. And another possibility is to buy into dividend stocks. And if you are a Singaporean, so we are from Singapore, and if you're a Singaporean, you can buy into Singapore stocks and you won't be taxed. But if you're a US citizen, it doesn't matter what you do and what, what, where you breathe, the US government will always tax you. You can be working in Singapore, US government tax you. Yeah, you can be working from Malaysia, yeah, they just tax you everywhere you go. So that's really, insane. Luckily, we're not US citizens. We're not US we citizens. We don't even get taxed for dividends and capital gains. Yeah, and if you're a Singaporean and you buy Singapore stocks, you don't get taxed on capital gains and dividends as well. It's magical, you can invest this money and not get tax. And I'm like, welcome to Singapore. <laughs> <laughs> we, the citizens of Singapore. <laughs> this is why Singaporeans are more patriotic. <laughs> well, thank God I'm Singaporean then. Mm -hmm. Yep. So as long as all these things stay true, I think it's it's very good for us. And, and which is why I feel like if you're a Singaporean, and you're not investing, I feel like it's it's a waste. Because you have so much opportunities. I mean, you have so much leverage. All right. I guess we're almost done with our trips. We're definitely done with this conversation. I'm definitely done talking to her. I'm sick of her face. But as you know, once the camera's off, I'll still be in his face. <laughs> Get out of here. Thank you, everyone, for joining us on this really short chat. Hope you had fun. Hope you guys learned something new. I hope you guys have commented as we are speaking about your numbers, what retirement means to you, how you define retirement, when you want to retire. Let's have a conversation in the comments below. That'll be fun. I want to know if everyone else also thinks about retirement the way we do. If you guys have anything you guys want to talk, want us to talk about in the next episode of our casual chats, let us know if you have an idea of a name we can use also let us know because it's the third episode second second or third episode and we don't have a name yet <laughs> <laughs> lastly like, we don't know uh, if it's a podcast if, a casual talk if you know talk. anyone from NutriSoy that would like to sponsor the <laughs> the, oh my the series and, or if anybody wants to send snacks we will display it and eat it during the series we met uh, we, Aaron doesn't isn't uh, worry about it because I'm paying for all his drinks next week. Oh, that's true. Next week, mm. Aaron will be the one buying uh, our snacks and then we'll see if he asks for this. Yeah, it, will, it won't be this big one. It'll be nutri soy, but it'll be the, the small can one.